at number 10. To Paint or Make Love, 2005. Happily married, faithful to each other, and still very much in love, the middle-aged couple of the early retired meteorologist, William Lasserre, and his successful businesswoman wife, Madeline, enjoy a well-ordered life, now that their only daughter has moved to Italy, but, Madeline is also a skillful painter and during one of her usual walks in the Alpine Vercors region not only will she stumble upon the town's sophisticated blind mayor, Adam, but also the picturesque rural farmhouse. Obviously, things couldn't be better for the Lasseres. However, when calamity strikes Adam and his charming young wife, Eva, it's only natural that the disaster-stricken neighbors would taste a slice of William and Madeline's warm and lavish hospitality, just until they get back on their feet. At number 9. Kiss Me Again, 2006. Julian and Chalice are married three years, affectionate and happy, he teaches at a storefront college, she counsels at Planned Parenthood, their Lower East Side flatmate is Malika, Chalice's longtime friend who's bisexual, Julian is attracted to a student, Elena, but steps back from an affair. He hatches a plan to convince Chalice to engage in a menage a trios. She's reluctant, then willing, Julian brings Elena into the picture without telling Chalice he already knows her. Meanwhile, Malika has her own response, against a backdrop of trouble at Julian's college, emotions royal, how many ways can this go wrong? At number 8. Viva. 2007. Your typical suburban housewife. She has a loving husband. Viva is about a bored housewife in 1972 who gets sucked into the sexual revolution. Abandoned by her husband, Barbie is dragged into trouble by her girlfriend, who spouts women's lib as she gets Barbie to discard her bra and go out on the town. Barbie becomes a red riding hood in a sea of wolves, and quickly learns a lot more than she wanted to about nudist camps, the hippie scene, orgies, bisexuality, sadism, drugs, and bohemia. And the cast of characters all pulled straight from the Playboy At number 7 Mancora, 2008 Tan fuerte Set adrift by his late father's suicide, Santiago Patrat decides to leave his hometown and travel to the coast to spend the winter in the northern resort town of Mancora, Peru. Consumed with grief, Patrat doesn't have the will to protest when his beautiful stepsister, Jimena Saavedra, and her abrasive new husband, Anigo, decide to join him. Together, the three embark on an escapist journey into a world of sex, drugs and family secrets. <laughs> Una puta más, una puta menos, no importa lo que importa. At number six. Erotica, Luz de Luna, 2008. Three stories, united by characters in common, that open the doors to sexual freedom. Romance is seen in three different stages of life, at 20, 30 and 40, in three intertwined stories, a married couple, Eduardo and Beatriz in search of new adventures, invite Adriana, a nurse to join them for a threesome, Carmen, a nurse falls in love with the wrong man Salvador, an old doctor friend. He takes some photographs of hers, to open up and achieve the search for a desired orgasm, and Rodrigo, a teenage boy in love with Camilla, a teenage oversexed girl lives a night of unexpected passion, without having it planned, but not only with the girl he wants also her friend, Ale in a threesome. At number 5. Affinidades, 2010. Por la maravillosa idea de estar haciendo este negocio. When facing the emptiness and lack of rational explanation for many of the problems in the world nowadays, sometimes the only solution appears to be to take refuge in one's instincts, and our instincts lead us to sex, at least, this is the way out found by the protagonists of this story sex as a sort of electric shock to stay alive and the manipulation of others as a way to stave off impotence and reaffirm their personalities, torn by loneliness, but the result is ephemeral and the attempt has unforeseen consequences. At 
number 4. Post Tenebras Lux, 2012. 1. A wealthy householder and Natalia are an artistic middle-class couple. They decide to change the life of the city, and they move to countryside with their two young children Eliezer and Rut for a plain and simple country life. Starting again with an ostentatious house, in comparison to the homes of the few neighbors, they initially enjoy the taste of rural life, however this change in taste begins to make the marriage crumble. Juan begins to have contact with people who have the same ideals. 7. A man who usually does everything in his power to survive leads him to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings in a ramshackle cabin in the woods. At one stage, the couple jet off for an upscale sex holiday in Europe, where the rooms in the bathhouse are named after Hegel and Duchamp. At number 3. Before We Grow Old, 2019. Niels and Maria, in their mid-twenties have been a couple for two years. Their relationship is open, sexuality and adventure determine their carefree everyday life. It is summer, they are without obligations and live free of rent at his wealthy uncle's apartment. They live into the day without worries, go to parties and like to test the common seduction skills in public, and yet both deal with it differently, both have their own individual tolerances and limits. This becomes clear at the latest when they meet Chloe, a London doctoral student on a train. Maria takes the first step, and so a flirt quickly develops into an intense romance between the two women. Niels soon joins them and she increasingly becomes an integral part of their lives. The three young people let themselves go according to the Berlin free spirit and plunge into one or the other love adventure. At number two. You deserve a lover, 2019. L'amour c'est pas de se faire tromper, c'est pas d'être qu'un menteur, un tricheur. After Remy infidelity, Lila, who loved him more than anything, has a hard time dealing with their breakup. One day, he announces that he will travel alone to Bolivia to soul search and try to understand his mistakes. There, he lets her know that their love story is not over, between discussions, seeking for comfort and encouragement from her friends, and the madness of love, Lila loses herself. You told me that too. At number one. Divine Love, 2019. In 2027 Brazil, civil servant Joanna mainly deals with divorce cases. As a member of a branch of evangelical Christians known as the Divino Amor Group, she uses her position to offer a kind of physical therapy to couples who want to separate. Although Joanna and her husband Danilo regularly consummate their marriage, neither her constant prayers nor any other methods of assistance seem to be able to fulfill their desire for a child. 